Try these on. Look, you crazy mother. Put these on. Hey! Stay away from me! I'm telling you, you dumb son of a bitch! <laughs> Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters. The very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. What? What's the most resilient parasite? An idea. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules. Which is why I have to steal it. Never recreate from your memory. Always imagine new places. He's hiding something and we need to find out what that is. We gotta break out of here. In the kick. to students of scientific evidence which both supports and counters scientific theory or hypothesis there is no scientific and assists evidence that counters. students in developing critical thinking skills to evaluate scientific theories and hypotheses. The legislature recognizes that the teaching of certain scientific topics such as climate science may be controversial. The legislature encourages the teaching of such scientific controversies to be made in an objective manner with both strengths and weaknesses of such scientific theory or hypothesis we we, what is, we the legislature the recognize that there is a debate about whether critical the earth thinking. is round or flat no, no, no. and you let's said. encourage critical thinking by saying there should be a legitimate debate between whether the earth is round or flat because after all any idiot can walk outside we're and, allowed, and see we're that it's flat. we don't have time for a meeting of the flat earth society there's the u.n flag Also the symbol of the flat earth. <laughs> now, of course, if I say flat earth, then I gotta be an idiot, right? That's what they told you, right? It's a ball. There's no Antarctica in this. <laughs> it's a bird's eye over the North Pole. Right in your fucking face. <laughs> you know, there's gonna be some comedians making jokes tonight, but uh, I wanna talk about the joke that's on you. My fellow Americans, we have just discovered uh, a new planet. Uh, although we've spent dozens and dozens of years researching and billions and billions of taxpayers' money researching space and exploring space science, we just saw this planet, we overlooked it. It was hiding behind a, a black hole or something. I don't know. But, but, uh, here, here, here are the images. Where are the images? You got the images? Yeah. So here, here are the images clearly, as you can see. Uh, it's about eight light years away. Uh, how do we have pictures? Uh, we have, we have super fast. We have million mile internet. Faster than anything Earth has seen. Uh, but we just use it to, for, to explore space. Uh, but uh, I tell you, you know, you can look at these pictures yourself. Or we got all the planets. Uh, but there's nothing out there. I mean, <laughs> I tell you, there's nothing out there. 
You know, we're gonna keep spending money and keep looking. We're gonna keep sending cameras into space. We're gonna keep sending fucking astronauts into space. We're gonna keep going out there and keep sending back CGI pictures. I mean, <clears throat> we're gonna keep sending back pictures. Just to let you guys know, you're alone. You're alone. And you're insignificant creatures. Signing off. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake, but we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. But they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fool me, we can't get fooled again. The light from the sun is very different than the light from the moon. The moon gives off her own light. Yes, you heard me correctly. The moon gives off her own light and does not reflect the light of the sun as science falsely so-called claims, as NASA claims, and as most people claim. Why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible Swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Yeah. Cyril, knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Why don't you talk to the administrator at NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. I don't hit people, but you're going to be on the deck unless you get well, I'm heading out. I'm heading out. Get the hell out of my house. Well, I've Take your stuff and get the fuck out. Why don't you quote me and say it's bullshit? And the shadows in her uncle. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Hey, like you You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if you ever thought of it. Saying Will I misrepresented myself. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to, I want you to swear get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you. You don't leave me alone. Watching them lie through their teeth, carrying on yep. a hoax that is so outrageous that they're they're beyond human. They couldn't cover it up. They no, were just human. You, exactly. You can see on Neil Armstrong particularly, oh. he, has to say, he yeah. doesn't want to lie. This guy just doesn't want to lie. No. He's looking down. He just doesn't want to say anything. This is why he didn't give any interviews for the rest of his life. Look at that. Please do look at that, folks. YouTube video of the first Apollo uh, crew to come press back at oh. press conference. It is, it's really embarrassing. I mean, it's just embarrassing. It was, the lie was so big that they couldn't, they really couldn't fake it that well. It was too much for them. It and was. I can't blame them. Then I, you know, you know what else? So many of the Apollo astronauts who allegedly went to the moon and all that kept really, when you think about it, low profiles. They, Absolutely. They, they just didn't talk much. And they, they, to, to this day, they don't talk much. The world has lied to us. Satan, the god of this world, has blinded the eyes of those that can't see the truth. There's connections. We need to look and see different. Think. Could everything be connected? Could the world system be set up to destroy the foundations of God with NASA? With science? 
right from the beginning, the foundations of God's word have been tampered with, have been distorted. Satan is the God of this world and he's distorting everything with his agency set up to deceive us. Look at what NASA presents us. CGI, paintings, composites, stitched together. Where are the pictures of the Earth? Why is it that there is only two images of the Earth? Where's the HD footage of the spinning Earth? Real pictures, real video. They even admit on their website these are fakes. These are not real. We've been lied to about our world. It's time for you to look into the truth. Research. It can be crazy to think. No. We know. It has to be real. The cognitive dissidence is running through. how directionals work on the flat earth. People are having a hard time conceptualizing how east and west and north and south work on the flat earth. So if you take a look at the flat earth map, it's kind of like a bullseye with the north pole, magnetic north, in the exact center. So if north is the exact center, which way is south? South is opposite north, just like on a globe. So if north is the center, then south is the outer rings. Now let's just say you were in Newark, New Jersey, where I am. North is going to be facing the center. South is going to be opposite you. West will be to your left, and east will be to your right. But what you have to realize is, all directionals, even on the globe Earth, are derived off of where north is. That's how compasses work. Okay? So, on the flat Earth, west is really you traveling clockwise in a circle with an even radius going around magnetic north. That would be west. West is clockwise. It's the way the sun goes. East would be counterclockwise with an even radius around magnetic north. That is how people claim to have circumnavigated the globe from east to west. They're not going around a ball. They're going in a circle around a flat plane. That is also why no one has ever circumnavigated the globe going north to south. It's impossible. You can't do it. Once you reach north, once you reach the center, you keep going. Now you're going south again. You're never going to come back underneath the ball because it's not a ball. If you could do it, it would have been done. But it hasn't because you can't.
the Earth. Is it really just a big ball floating in space? Spinning on its axis at 1,000 miles per hour? Hurtling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour? Whizzing through the Milky Way at a milk-curdling speed of over half a million miles per hour? And warp driving through the heaven at over half a billion miles per hour? And what about the sun? Is it really 93 million miles away and close to a million miles in diameter with a circumference of nearly 3 million miles? and it's constantly illuminating half of our entire Earth's surface with the rotation of the Earth creating our 24-hour days, our night and days? Or, shh, the Earth is flat. And maybe it's completely still, just like we experience. And maybe the sun isn't big but it's very small and very close and not illuminating the Earth from 93 million miles but is illuminating locally. And maybe everything, the sun, moon, and stars are not far away but are circling overhead relatively close. In this video we're going to explore the latter option and at the end we're going to reveal startling evidence through the use of time-lapse photography that the sun cannot possibly be 93 million miles away but is in fact very close and is illuminating locally as it traverses our flat Earth. Oh man, and watch how this sun comes at you. Boom! I mean, come on. And that's all perspective. If you look at jet trails, Google images, you'll see them. They start out low at the horizon, they come up overhead. Look at that thing. They come up overhead and then they go down to the horizon. Perfectly explains what the sun would do. Here it is going overhead. I love time lapse. And look at this. You can't go out and look at the sun. You can't see this stuff, except that it's on, you know, time lapse like this. It's incredible. Now watch this thing. It's sweeping. You know, the sun over flat Earth is doing a big circle, right? Look at this thing. See it sweeping to the right. It's like a lefty bowler. Just toss that down the alley, and there it goes, hooking into the pocket. <laughs> Shut it there. That's exactly how the sun would do on flat Earth. Okay, back to the Copernican principle, and this is what they tell us. The sun is 93 million miles away. Now, I'm going to show you evidence through sunsets that shows the sun light following the sun over the horizon, and it shrinks as it goes over. Now, there's no way it would do that if the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, first I'm going to show you some footage from the ISS. Okay, now watch this animation. Watch this sunset. Now this is exactly, if they came to me and said, do an animation, this is how I would do it. If the sun were 93 million miles away. Just like that. Have the whole horizon fade evenly. But that's not what we see. Okay, wow, look at that. Look how the light lifts off the ground like a big wedge or like lifting up a sheet of paper. That's incredible footage. Definitely the light's following the sun, right? Okay, next I'm going to show you um, how uh, a sun that is circling over the earth, that creates the horizontal aspect of the sun, if you combine that with perspective, which creates the up and down of the sun, the rising and the setting, you get the 23.5 degree tilt that they talk about. It's nothing but perspective and the circling sun. Here 
there's another sun sweeping out a big circle. Here's a phenomenon that you might be wondering, how in the heck do you explain this on a flat earth? Well, this footage is taken from Alaska during the summer, and um, the sun does look like it's going up and down. The reason it's doing that is that this town in Alaska is not in the center of the sun's circular circuit. In other words, the sun is making a big circle, and the town is not in the center of that circle. So the sun will be closer and further from the viewer with the camera. That will cause it to go higher and lower, and also maybe even bigger and smaller. Look at the, the high altitude airplane. Remember, this is from a high altitude balloon. So that airplane is probably at cruising altitude. Notice how it looks like it's going up from the horizon. That's exactly how the sun will rise because that plane is staying parallel to the ground. And now watch, it'll go down to the other horizon. All right, again, perspective. That's how the sun will set. And forget the big ball. That's just a, due to a GoPro camera. But see how the sun, that's the point of this. And then also, Look at the size of the sun, man. Look at that thing. I mean, there's something to it to say that we're the higher we're higher up our view and the sun looks bigger and it looks like it's not as high in the sky as it does when we're on the ground. Something to that. Let's explore this notion a bit further that the sun looks bigger when filmed from higher up. The next three slides I'm going to do a comparison, a side by side. The one on the left, the camera's above the clouds. The camera on the right is ground level. And the point for the side by side comparison from the ground level and the level above the clouds is that above the clouds we're only maybe a mile or so up. And if the sun appears to be closer to the camera, well, that means it's probably much closer because if the sun were 93 million miles away, a mile closer wouldn't make any difference at all to its visual appearance.
Okay, here's a little uh, illustrator or a little cartoon from a website called timeanddate.com. It's really funny that they would have a perfect illustration of a sun rising and setting on a flat earth due to perspective. You'll notice that it rises from below the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now you might be saying, well, how is that possible? I can see now you're saying that it rises and lowers due to perspective, but how does it disappear below the horizon? Well, I got a theory about that. Because of the fact that all parallel lines and planes converge at your eye level horizon, this is according to the perspective. I'm not making this up. If in fact, and they do, they converge at your eye level horizon visually, then it makes sense that after that point, they diverge, meaning they then separate. So the sun would continue on a downward track. As you can see from my illustration here, the lines would go to your horizon, and then afterwards, they would spread out and separate, kind of like a starburst, and the starburst being at your horizon, at your focal point. Without further ado, we're going to start talking about, and I'm going to start showing you the time lapse of the sunsets that I'm talking about that clearly show the sun is close and illuminating locally. Here we go. All right, and here are a couple of uh, time lapse sunsets. And just like the sun rises at the beginning of this video, where you could see the sun coming at you, not maintaining any 93 million mile distance, here you can also see the sun moving away, and it's uh, clearly not due to the rotation of the Earth and a sun that's maintaining 93 million miles away, but the sun is moving over the Earth and moving away from you. Okay, these next three slides, uh, the sun is almost set already behind the horizon, but watch as the sunlight shrinks and follows the sun. It's definitely a locally illuminating sun, not far away, not very big, and definitely not 93 million miles away.
The, uh, the zero-g illusion also that you see astronauts, uh, they look like they're floating or flying in space. It's achieved through three different ways. <coughs> One way is through zero-g planes. Uh, they're just Boeing 737 specially outfitted to do these parabolic maneuvers where they, they do a, a parabolic and then you have a zero-g like free fall state where it seems like you're floating for about a minute at a time you can keep this this going um, the second way when they're like at the fake international space station uh, fixing things outside of it this is done in a pool in a dark pool they're actually underwater um, and you can see bubbles rising out of the pool, uh, proving that they're in a pool in many of their spacewalks. Uh, so, so the outside space shots are done in the pool. The inside, uh, most of the inside shots are done in zero-g planes. And then some of the longer inside shots are done with a green screen and harnesses. So they just kind of float on a harness in front of a green screen. And with these three methods, they're able to produce the uh, zero-g effect that everybody thinks is uh, them floating around in space. Uh, but in reality, uh, anything that goes up comes right back down. There is no point where you can just go up, 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 and then, oh, I'm floating now, and I get to float through infinite space now forever. That's the illusion. That doesn't happen. You will always come back to the Earth. You'll always fall right back down. No matter how high you go up? As high as, high as any non-NASA source has gone. Right before your surgery, I asked if you had packed your cell phone, and you said, which one? When? Skylar, I was medicated. I mean, I, I, I could have said the world was flat. You know what I think? I think you accidentally told the truth. Please stop what you're doing and listen. This is not a drill. I can't tell you if what happened is an act of terror or an act of God. Where the hell did it come from? No idea. Yeah, people trapped in here. We're on our own. What are you telling us? We're trapped like rats? Stop! To prevent your poisons from spreading, your government has sealed you all within this dome. Do you know how to fly those? Absolutely. Do you get to fly to the edge? Oh, yeah. What's past there? Don't know. We're not allowed to fly past that. Let's go. It's against the rules, Jonas. Who are you? The Giver. When the elders need guidance, I provide wisdom using memories of the past. Our world was different. There was more. More? Much more. There is no way for me to prepare you for the truth. The German cartographer, Mercator, originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But yes. it distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America. When it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico, when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, wait. Relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. 
Where is it? I'm glad you asked. What's your take? I just have one thing to say to all the flat earthers and anti-science kooks out there. Put the crack pipe down. Of course, we've been to the This can't be the right place. The address is on the invoice. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. Just call it a dome. You think we might be stuck in here a while? I think that even if what's wrong suddenly becomes right, the army's just gonna quarantine this place. I want roving death squads around the perimeter 24 7. I want 10,000 times.
Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel? With words without knowledge. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and I wrapped it in thick darkness? When I fixed limits for it, and set its doors and bars in place? When I said, This far you may come, and no farther? Here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning, or shown the dawn its place? that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light, and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You've lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain, a path for the thunderstorm, to water a land where no man lives, a desert with no one in it, to satisfy a desolate wasteland, and make it sprout with grass? Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? When the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen? Can you bind the beautiful Pleiades? Can you loose the cords of Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons? Or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who endowed the heart with wisdom? Or gave understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Society. You don't want to wake up, but it's like the Matrix, and it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalms 118.8 The world's lies. The Earth does not orbit the Sun. Everything orbits around us. We're geostationary. We're motionless. Think. Read. Discover the truth of what God has laid out clearly in His Word. 
in the Bible, you will clearly see that everything gets clearer as you look out into the world and into the sky. It's time to wake up. God's truth is in the Bible. He created you and the world special. None of this could be possible without the Big Bang, evolution, and all of the lies all come back to our matrix which we have been told we live in. We do not. It's time to wake up to God's truth. What on flat earth does the Bible say? It says that we're loved, that we're created beautiful, that everything was created for us, that we have purpose, that this world has been put in place for us. Everything that's tried to destroy the foundations of God, tried to kill God in people's minds with their nonsense theories of random accidents of chance. Could it be? Could it be that it's that easy? That God explained so clearly and yet we were lied to? Right from when we were children, spinning the globe? The whole world lies in the power of the wicked man. It's time. It's time for you to read the Bible. It's time for you to come to God and ask Him Do it today. Are you trusting God? Are you trusting man? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God without through him. And it's time for you to make that change and to make that life altering conversion. Be born again. Accept Christ. Repent and celebrate truth. Blessings.